आवाज की जानब से सलाम अर्ज़ करती हूँ आज हम यहाँ सीनियर्स फाइनर क्लब के फंक्शन पे आए हुए हैं यहाँ पर मेडिकल नेचुरल प्रैक्टिशनर वेल नोन आए हुए हैं जो कि आपको करोना के बारे में मालूम देंगे और करोना जैसे मूजी मर्ज से अल्लाह ताला सब को बचाए और आप इनसे मालूम हासिल कीजिए on the subject of corona virus infections so i would request the presenters to come over introduce themselves okay hello good morning uh, my name is rene liao uh, my parents were basically born in malaysia and cambodia but i was born here in toronto so i should have pretty good english i hope um and so today we're going to be sharing a bit with you again what the corona virus and of course how to really prepare yourself because as you probably heard there's a few more cases already in Toronto so uh i think it's almost sometimes inevitable to try to you know prevent yourself from getting it you just don't know who has it nowadays uh it does spread very quickly so today we have a very amazing presentation to share with you just about the virus your immune system and how to really take care of yourself so uh a quick a quick background on my my father um I got really into the health uh I guess you know um concerned because my father when I was really young uh he used to gamble with stocks uh so back then there's a stock called Nortel he had no Nortel the stock so my dad lost a lot of money <laughs> in Nortel almost like uh more, more than half a million dollars uh when that happened his health started to really deteriorate he was stressed out angry overeating and so he had a heart disease a few heart attacks Uh, he had his a uh, uh, you know high cholesterol, high blood pressure, high sugar level, diabetes, gout, like you name it. He almost had everything. Uh he even had about this much of his intestine uh cut out because of a uh, of a intestine infection. So since then, uh when I was about, you know, 19 years old, I was very very already cautious about my health. So today, I'm going to share with you guys a quick presentation on just health in general and then of course we have a very special guest speaker as well uh Dr. Henry he's a registered a TCM which is traditional Chinese medicine practitioner uh speaking for the last part so um pretty much just to explain if you ever curious why do we actually get sick and have you noticed more recently there's more people with diseases you know diabetes has now surpassed a billion people in the world uh dementia all these new diseases and people getting sick It all comes down to uh one thing we have to understand is a world called free radicals. So who's heard of free radicals before? Anyone heard of free radicals? Okay, a few people here. In short, your body is made up of millions of cells, right? For the cell to be healthy, it basically requires to have two electrons to keep it balanced. But due to a lot of the stresses, the pollution, the food that we eat, even oxidative stress, sometimes the free radicals they lose a cell okay so now they're called uh, unpaired once you have an unpaired cell it's called a free radical so free radicals over time can damage your cell's dna the actual structure of your dna also uh, the ability to function so things start to not work as well okay and so i guess the best way to understand this is here is a normal cell very healthy Here is a cell being attacked by free radicals, all right? Once that happens, your cell is now undergoing oxidative stress. Um so the best way to also understand is if I have an apple and I cut the apple open in half, I put the apple on the table, what happens to the color of the apple on the inside? It, it turns brown, right? So that process is caused from the oxygen reacting with the apple. It's called oxidation. All right. So, um oxidation, you don't really notice it right away, but over time, it builds up like rusting, like rusting on a car part or the apple, and it contributes to aging and many, many diseases. So, you ever see two people can be the exact same age, yet one person looks much older and sometimes the other looks a lot younger? It comes down to how much uh oxidation damage happened to them, okay? So, Um people are asking well, Renee, where do these free radicals come from? It's already all around us, even inside ourselves. But usually our body has an immune system to fight off these things, right? So for example, uh, if you're taking drugs or antibiotics, it causes free radicals. If you smoke, 
it causes free radicals. Now we have, of course, people are smoking marijuana, they're vaping, it's more free radicals. Uh, if you're stressed out, anyone here stressed out? We're, we're all retired, we're all really happy, that's good, <laughs> okay, that's very good. So stress is one factor. Of course, viruses and bacteria, the coronavirus is another source, absolutely, for free radicals. The Wi-Fi, the household chemicals, alcohol. Exercise is good, but over-exercise also creates more free radicals. Uh, mold radiation, the pollution, even processed foods. So this is not the McDonald's or just Burger King. If you eat hot dogs, sausages, any kind of processed foods also has free radicals. <coughs> Again, if you lack of sleep, uh, toxins and the sun, so all these things create free radicals. So if oxidation is the problem, then the solution to being healthy is to get a lot of antioxidants, right? Who's heard of antioxidants before? Anti yeah, so we should all get antioxidants because, um, now in the market, there's two main areas to get antioxidants. One is from the vitamins, right? Multivitamins and those pills. The only downside to vitamins is that they're, they're man-made. Anything man-made, your body has a hard time to digest. Does that make sense? Because it's not natural, right? And in most cases, uh, if you look at the research today, if you take a multivitamin, about 70-80% of the multivitamin goes in and most of it just goes out. You don't actually absorb it into your body. But it's still a good source, right? But the much better source of antioxidants, of course, is the natural one. So when you're young, your parents always tell you to eat your fruits and the veggies, right? Fruits of lignans, your broccoli, the apples, the onions, you know, the uh, kale, all good sources. But be before, the number one best source of lignans was this. Any guesses what that is? This is a seed. Do you know what kind of seed that is? Flaxseed, yes. So who's heard flaxseeds are very good for you? They're very good for you, right? And, and who here eats flaxseeds every morning? Oh, oh okay, well, half through. So sometimes flaxseeds, it's a bit hard, right? You have to grind it, put it into your cereal or your shape. It's a bit of a convenience. It's not really convenient to eat the flaxseed. But also, uh, the body cannot eat too much flax seeds. You will get diarrhea. Because <laughs> we're not birds, we can't digest that many seeds. Uh, but it's still really good. So the question is, what is the right amount of lignans you should be getting every day, right? According to researchers, they say you want to have a minimum of 50 to 100 milligrams of lignans per day to be good health, right? But according to the research in the Western society, most people only get one milligram per day. So ask yourself, yesterday or this morning or last week, how much fruits and vegetables did you eat? Now if you cook the fruit or vegetable, what happens to the lignin? You kill the lignin. So it must be fresh. You cannot add heat or you will just kill the lignin. So, here are some examples of good sources, okay? Now you can see here, uh, this measurement is in micrograms. So we have kilograms, then you have grams, then you have milligrams, then we have micrograms, very small, right? So for 100 milligrams of green tea, you have 39. So Japanese people have still the longest lifespan because they have a good diet of green tea as well, right? Uh, now, apricot broccoli has 1,300. Kale has almost 2,000. Very good. But kale, again, if you, you must eat it raw. If you cook the kale, you kill the lignin, right? So, but you see here, the number one source of lignans before was the, the flaxseed. 300,000. So it's, it's much, much, much more than everything else. Because what, uh, what the corona, coronavirus is, it's actually one of the flus. It's one of the flus. And, and it's a microorganism that exists in the form of a, a protein. It's a protein. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a cell by itself. It's not something that's that big. But it has to, has to inhabit a cell. It has to get into a cell, attached to a cell, to exist. 
So that's why it, it, only, it only goes with the, with the carrier, with the body, human body, a bird or a snake or something. So that's why when uh, we heard about it first from China, right? People, we all know it's from China, Wuhan. Now everybody, uh, actually that's the city where I'm, I am from. I grew up there. Um, but, but now we are getting, uh, getting sources from Iran. And the people there that they get the disease or the coronavirus infection, they, did have, they had no contact whatsoever with China. They didn't travel to China. They didn't get in touch with anybody in China. So they got it locally. So it's a, it's, a, it's a virus that's actually around in the air in the universe somewhere. And uh, we had uh, actually similar cases in the US in September. And they didn't know it's a corona, coronavirus. They didn't identify this is actually the same as the, as the Wuhan virus. So it could be somewhere, somewhere it, it goes around. So now, right now it's in 64 countries. And we, we got 34, I think, so far in, in Canada. So it is coming, and it, it, because we are multicultural uh, country, and especially Toronto is a multicultural city, we had uh, more than 180 country, country communities in Canada, in Toronto, alone. So uh, as, as the 64 countries so far is getting this, uh, the people traveling back and forth uh, through all these countries, now you, don't, you, you can't even just watch for Chinese, right? So it could be from anywhere. Uh, any country, and uh, the, uh, the, only, the only best thing you can do, apart from washing your hands, putting a mask on, is actually to, to rebuild your immune system. And the seniors and, uh, and uh, uh, people with uh, basic uh, uh, disease, like uh, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, asthma, all these people, they are more vulnerable. So, uh, you know, if it, by chance that it grows really bad, uh, if you have a stronger defense system, then you are in better, in better hope. Otherwise, uh, this, we senior people, once we get it, it's very tough. Because what happens is uh, when the coronavirus uh, gets into your body through your, your hands, which you touch food or use your hand to eat especially, and then you could uh, get it from breathing of the, the nose, which is the, it, it usually gets, it doesn't penetrate your skin, but it goes through your membranes in the mouth, in the nose, and in the eyes. So if you roll your eyes with, uh, with your hands, then the, the virus can pass through to the, to the eyes, through into the body. And that's the most uh, vulnerable part of our body. That's why we need to, we need to protect these areas at the same time, we need to, uh, to, defend, uh, to, to make our defense system stronger. When the virus invades our body, it starts to, uh, to cause an immune system reaction. Because the virus, they multiply by the millions. They, go, they grow very, very fast. So when they grow, the body immediately detects that uh, action or that uh, threat. And then our white blood cells, red blood cells, our, our cells, our defense cells, we call the natural killer cells and macrophage cells, different immune system response cells, they start to, to act up. That's how people get fever. So when they start to act up, they start to, uh, to go out and hunt this uh, uh, virus. But these are, these are more like, uh, they, they are more like uh, also like machine guns. They, they shoot the virus at the same time they cause damage to the neighboring cells. And that's when we, when we have this, uh, this uh, we call the free radical damage. So the attack of the immune system response to the virus causes free radical damage. And the free radical damage causes uh, inflammation, infection. And the, the virus kills the people by infecting their body all, uh, all of the body, like the, the, all the major organs, they get infected. We call it uh, 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 like a Niagara Fall, uh, fall uh, like a falls effect, which means the whole thing, everything gets infected. And, and then the people, their, their lungs get completely white and their uh, kidney and liver, uh, they completely fail because uh, of the uh, infection in all the organs. And then because of that, it causes a lot of phlegm accumulation in the body, especially in the lungs. 
So when the lungs, they get accumulation of fluid and a phlegm, very sticky fluid that, that patch up and block all the airways. And that's how we jam ourselves up and then we, we have difficulty breathing. So, so fever and difficulty breathing is the main, main uh, symptom. Or oh, people die from suffocating. They can't, uh, they can't breathe anymore. The reason why we have so much, uh, so many deaths in, in, in the city of Wuhan is because it's a, it's a, it's a city of uh, 14 million people there. And, uh, and uh, as we can see, even in Canada, we have so few people. Once we, have, once we get through the uh, flu season, the people lining up in the emergency room, they wait for hours and hours. And that's on a normal situation. When there is an outbreak, uh, plus the regular, uh, re the regular uh, flu, people get a, get a fever too and all that, all of a sudden there's an outburst of all these uh, patients with uh, coronavirus. So that's why in the beginning it's, it's so difficult to handle it. A lot of people, they can't even get a room. They can't get into the hospital. They can't get a doctor. They can't, so that's why a lot of death in the beginning. Now, China did a great job in controlling. China actually did a lot of sacrifice by locking down the 14 million people in the city. They don't allow any traveling, everything shut down. The whole system, like air, uh, the, the TDC, <laughs> their TDC subway, uh, everything is shut down, no traveling, everybody stay home. And they did a lot of sacrifice to, just to keep the, the, the world safe. Uh, so right now, it's actually not really about China. China, it's only coming down to a few, uh, uh, 29 deaths in one day now. Everything came back down under control. Everything's under control. But now we are more worried about Japan, about Korea, about, uh, about uh, Iran and all these other countries. And it's spread into uh, 64 countries. Uh, 70 country. this morning. 70. So it's just growing by tens of uh, countries by day, day by day. And, I, and it's, uh, it, it will take, take quite some time to really get everything under control and uh, to, uh, to get over. So it is, uh, it is become, uh, that's why Health Canada is, uh, is, uh, is changing the, their strategies uh, as, uh, to, uh, to fight it. Right now, there is no cure. There's no cure to this virus. So the, the only thing is uh, the, in the hospital, they give you support. They give you a breathing machine. They give you uh, injections to fight uh, inflammation, infection, but the virus itself, you have to fight it off by your own immune system. If your immune system cells are, are weak and die and all that, there's no way you can survive because it ha you have to fight it out yourself. The other, other supporting things is only to keep you alive and let your body do the job. Hello, EFAS listeners. My name is Rene Liao, and today I'm just here to talk a little bit about the coronavirus and how to really prepare yourself as the virus comes closer to home. As you probably heard this morning, Toronto has a few more cases. And really the best thing to understand about the coronavirus is that it's a virus. It's like a flu. And it won't be the first virus, it won't be the last virus that you come across. So with viruses, our bodies have a, a natural defense mechanism called the immune system to go and fight these viruses, right? And so what you want to do uh, to prevent yourself uh, number one from getting the virus is definitely to try to wear a face mask as well as to sanitize and wash your hands. But that being said, it's not always easy to guarantee that you don't get the actual virus itself. The other way to prepare for the virus is just to be prepared in case you actually do get the virus like any other kind of flu or viruses. Uh, some quick pointers here for our listeners. The mortality rate or the kill rate of the virus is actually less than the flu. About 2% actually do pass away or die from it, and they're usually in their elder years, whereas the actual flu itself is about 8%. So it's actually not even as bad as the, the flu per se. But that being said, the best way to prepare your body in case you do get the virus is to boost your immune system. And, and so how can you boost your immune system is to make sure you get enough what we call antioxidants. So uh, free radicals that come from pollution, from processed foods, from 
drugs, from smoking, from you know different things, even from viruses, free radicals are what's going to actually break down the cells in your body. So antioxidants help to neutralize the free radicals. So to keep it short, the best way to have your body prepared for the onset of the coronavirus is to take as much powerful antioxidants as possible. Now there are antioxidants you can buy from the vitamin stores, you know, from the health food stores like vitamins and those sort of things too. However, the best sources, in my opinion, are always going to be the natural sources, like the flaxseed is very high in, in lignin antioxidants. So try to find yourself a really powerful natural antioxidant, if you can, from nature as well too. So that being said, I want to say thank you for your time. My name is Rene Liao, and thank you for watching. Come closer. That's it. That's it? Is it okay? Okay, you hold from here. Yeah. Now you can say your name. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Wilma David, and I am a chemical engineer by profession. Uh, I've worked with the pharmaceutical industry, and then I'm bringing awareness to all the people uh, to protect themselves against the coronavirus. And the best way to protect themselves, obviously, is to boost your immune system and um, always wash your hands and make sure that you protect yourself by eating um, highly antioxidant foods and the and this way that your body will prevent from oxidation. And uh, it is important that you always have to protect yourself um, against your environment by being so cautious about what you do and paying attention to your environment. If you see something, make sure you touch or wash your hands or um, um, you know, tell your loved ones to always protect themselves. And um, being in the pharmaceutical industry, I've always have seen that people take drugs. Uh, but there are other ways to boost your immune system. And then uh, those are come from plants and other natural resources. So it's better to be aware, to educate yourself, and then make sure that you are protecting yourself by educating and um, uh, talking to people who are knowledgeable about this field of industry. And this way you will know you're better and also protect your loved ones. So again, this is Wilma David. I'm so happy to be sharing this in your show and uh, stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you That's so, much. so nice of you. Thanks. That's all? OK. Hello, my name is Henry Hui Bin Shuang. I'm a registered TCMP, traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. I uh, uh, help people with uh, different uh, conditions and uh, disease, especially in the, in the mental health and brain health related uh, issues. The coronavirus right now is, uh, is becoming an epidemic, pandemic. It's going uh, to 70 countries right now. And we have to rebuild our immune system so that we can fight it better because the, um, the virus affects senior people and vulnerable people are no more than the regular uh, healthy people. So uh, we are a multicultural society here in Canada. We have people from almost all over the world and uh, people travel freely from here and there. Now, at this uh, virus time, uh, we need to uh, make ourselves stronger, especially in our immune system defense, so that we can, even if we are exposed to it, uh, we have a better chance of survival and uh, get over the condition uh, easier and faster. So, because right now it's, uh, it's been uh, spread all over the world right now, it's going, uh, increasing by five, six, seven uh, countries a day. So it's going to be um, a big issue in the near future, so we don't have uh, much uh, idea of when it's going to be get under control. So we need to really get on top of it and build our immune system stronger so that uh, you can uh, uh, fight it off better. Uh, thank you very much for listening.
being really mindful of your posture throughout this practice. And we'll be moving very slow, so don't feel like you need to rush. This truly is meant to be for everybody, regardless of age or experience level. Slow, steady breathing in and out through your nose. And we'll continue with this breath, but adding some little neck circles. So you can drop your head over towards your right shoulder and then trace little half moves as you drop the chin to the chest. And then inhale to lift back up. Just half moves, so not taking the head back. You just go a little here. Relax your jaw fully so there's no tension. And then the next time you bring your right ear towards your right shoulder, you're going to hold it there. And you can extend your left arm out to the side just to deepen the intensity of that stretch. If you'd like to take it further still, you're welcome to bring your right hand towards the top of the head, not pushing down, but instead pulling your ear further away from your shoulder. And if it's too much, let go of the arms. Not looking for anything too intense here. Just a great way to release tension. And lift the head all the way back up and we'll switch sides. So left ear towards your left shoulder, keeping the chin slightly lifted. And then right arm can reach out to the side. Maybe using your left hand to pull the ear further away. You might notice that one side is different from the other. Keep your chest lifted so the spine is long, not slouching at any point here. All the way back to center, hands on your lap. Cat and cat from here, so you might want to hold on just to the fronts of your knees. As you inhale, you're going to lift the chest up to the sky, squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. And on the exhale, round forward and contract in. Just a few more like this. Inhale, open up. And exhale, lower down. Twice more. Contract. And let's come all the way back to center. So you're going to bring your right hand towards the outer edge of your chair. So you want to cross over your body. Reach your left arm up to the sky and then move into a side bend. So you want the left fingertips to reach all the way up and over. And it just helps to be able to grip the chair so that you don't fall over, of course. Lengthen out. Inhale, come back up. And then with your left hand, you're just going to bring it to the back of your chair. And then use the chair to twist yourself open. So you can even go and look over the left shoulder. Lengthen and reach the crown of your head up to the sky. Exhale to release. And we'll switch sides. So this time, bring your left hand over the chair. Hold on to it. Reach your right arm up to the sky. So this length that you're creating, you want to maintain it even as you tilt and stretch out. Extending long through those fingertips. Big, deep breath here. Come all the way up into your twist. Hold on to the back of the chair as you look over your right shoulder. So no slouching, no rounding forward here. And release, facing forward. Little half sun salutations. As you inhale, circle the arms wide, palms come together to touch. And then exhale, fold all the way down, let your belly rest over your thighs. Inhale, halfway lift, you can lengthen the crown of your head forward. And exhale, fold deeper still. Push into your feet, come all the way up. Inhale, strong through your core. Exhale, hands at your heart. One more like this. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, fold all the way down. Relax your head, relax your neck. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold even deeper. Push into your heels, lift on up. And bring your hands down to the heart. And you can just turn to one side, doesn't matter which side. But you'll want to straighten the legs just a little bit more. So you really don't need to be perfectly straight. I'm feeling a little bit bent here. But you just want to have your feet under your knees. Extend them out a little bit more. And then inhale, lift the heart. We're going to make our way into a forward fold. So all the way down. And you might be able to let your fingertips come down to the floor. Just trying to stretch into the hamstrings a little bit. Stretching through the spine. This is what we call the ragdoll pose. Yoga. And now grip your hands on your legs. Slowly walk them back up. Coming on up. And face forward once more. Now facing forward, you might need to move forward a little bit on your chair. You don't want to be resting all the way back. So only the seat is down. And then pull your right knee in towards your belly. So you can either hold on to the back of the thigh or the front of your shin, and you're just going to take some ankle rolls with that right foot. Really flex and point through the toes. Get as much motion and movement as you can here. You can reverse the opposite direction. And now, if possible, you're going to keep your right knee as it is, but let go of your left arm. So reach your left arm out to the side. Now bring some stillness to the foot. We're going to do the same thing, open up. So hip flexor and core strength is holding that right knee up. Take a big inhale. If you'd like to go further, you're going to straighten your right leg out in front of you. I know this one is hard. And now hold on to the back of the hamstrings and lift it up. So big hamstring stretch. And release. Set the foot back down. We'll switch sides. So left knee comes in towards your belly, hold on to whatever is accessible. You can flex and point the toes, take a few ankle rolls. Really try to lift up tall here, draw your shoulders back. Then bringing some stillness to the foot, you're going to extend your right leg, or sorry, your right arm out to the side. Really feel the abdominals start to contract and engage, and you're going to hold that knee there as you also open up the left arm up. So a challenging pose, really working on strength. Inhale, straighten that left leg, try to push into the heel, full body strength, and then hold on to the back of the hamstrings to lift it up a little more, big, big stretch. And release down. So from here, open up your legs as wide as they'll go. So like a goddess pose that we would do in yoga. You want your heels and toes pointing out so everything is in line. Hips are open, knees are open, toes are open. As you inhale, you're going to circle the arms up, big breath in. Exhale, hands lower down to the heart. Think of squeezing your glutes, but pushing those knees open. This should be an activating pose. Inhale, arms wide. Exhale, hands at your heart. One more like this. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, release it down. Bring your hands to the tops of your thighs. We're going to take a shoulder release. You can drop your right shoulder down, and at the same time, I'm using my right hand to push my knee open a little bit wider. So there's a really big stretch here through the inner groin, as well as a twist through the upper body. And switch sides, so push into your left thigh this time. Drop your left shoulder down. And coming all the way back to center. From here, bring your legs back in. We're going to take warrior two. So you want to bring your right knee out to the side, and you're going to step your left foot all the way back. So my right thigh is fully supported by the chair. You don't need to use too much leg strength here, but you're going to be able to play around with it. So the left foot is flat to the mat, parallel. Right toes point directly forward, and you want your knee and your toes to be in line. So from here, you can go ahead and reach your arms out nice and long, palms facing down. Shoulders are over your hips, and you can play with building up your strength here. So eventually, you want to be able to push your feet into the mat, 
and actually lift your hips off of the chair. But if that's not happening just yet, no problem. Just think of really pushing your feet into the floor to activate the muscles. Take three breaths here where you are, lengthen out even more. Super strong, and we'll reverse. Bring your left hand to your left thigh, reach your right arm all the way up and over. Big side bend. Come all the way back, extended side angle. You're gonna bring your right hand to your right thigh, left arm up and over. Like a big counter stretch. And then let's release. And we'll go and switch to the other side. So carefully bend that left knee. And this time you want your left thigh to be completely supported by the chair. As you step your right foot as far back as it can go. You want that right leg to be nice and straight. Try to align the front, your front heel to the middle of your back arch. And once you have that with your shoulders staying over your hips, you're going to reach out long through the arms, palms facing down. And again, you're trying to challenge yourself a little bit, especially if you're you know, working on rehabilitating an injury, for example. Start to push the feet into the floor and see if maybe the hips can start to hit, lift and hover an inch or so off the chair. Now, this will be hard if your chair is very high, well, hopefully you're able to work on it at home. Let's reverse, right hand down to the leg, left arm reaches all the way up and back. <laughs> back to center, extended side angle, bring your left forearm to your left thigh, Right arm extends all the way up and over. So your bicep is along the ear and you're reaching out through the right fingertips. Come all the way back. Go ahead and sit all the way back in your chair. Get comfortable. Our variation of Shavasana. You can let your arms relax. Palms can face up and just close your eyes without slouching too much. Just notice how you feel now as opposed to when you first started moving and flowing. Feeling the activation and engagement through the entire body. Take five cleansing breaths here. <laughs> 